Father, I thank you for the word this morning, for all the beautiful people that are here and for the opportunity to be here in this great church. I pray that as the word goes forth today, that people would be healed. Your word says in Psalm 107, 20, that you send your word and you heal them and deliver them from the pit and from destruction. So I'm expecting people to be healed physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, in every way. Thank you today that we can learn. Amen. I want to talk to you today about having a dream for your life. It's very important that we have dreams and visions. And to be honest, I don't think you have to wait to get one from God. I think you can have one. The Bible says that old men will dream dreams and young men will see visions. I think a lot of times people are sitting around waiting for some supernatural happening, some voice, some prophetic utterance, some appearance of an angel to give them some certainty about what it is that they're supposed to do. But I think a lot of times you just got to step out and find out. I'm sure that there's a lot of you here today and you think, I don't know what God wants me to do. Well, why don't you just start trying a few things and you'll find out pretty quick what works and what doesn't. I really wanted to be used by God and I just was, was so full of desire to be used by God and so I, I just started doing some things. Our church would take people out on the streets on Saturday morning and pass out tracts. And to be honest, that, that's not something that I feel particularly gifted for. But I wanted to serve God, so, so I went out. It was cold. It wasn't comfortable. We drug our kids into the downtown streets of St. Louis every Saturday. And the first gospel tract that I handed to somebody, the guy slapped it out of my hand and said, I don't want that. And he added a few choice words. And then... I tried working in the nursery for a while, and that only... <laughs> now, why are you all laughing? <laughs> well, it only took about two weeks for me and the kids to know that wasn't... <laughs> that wasn't my anointing. And, you know, I'd have to say that I was just the kind of person that I was determined I was going to serve God. I wanted to be used by God, and so I just tried different things. You know, sometimes you just got to... You know, it's kind of like when you go out and you buy clothes. you got to try on stuff till you find what fits. And I think a lot of times it's that way in life. you just got to try on some stuff until you find what fits. So don't be afraid to step out, have dreams, have visions, have hopes, and always, always, always believe in miracles. There are dreamers who don't work, and there are workers who don't dream. And neither one of them work. So let's think about that. What if you're a person who's a hard worker, but you don't have a dream? There's a lot of people like that, you know. They just get up every day and go at it, and they do what's there to be done. But they don't, they don't have any hope or dream beyond Friday's paycheck and getting the bills paid and starting all over next week. And I think when we live like that, we get so bored. It's just like same old, same old, same old. Boring, boring, boring. Is there, isn't there going to be more to life than this? When is something exciting going to happen to me? And so they sit back. Really, if you're going to work, you need to have a dream. You need to have a hope for what you're going to do with the fruit of your labor. You need to believe that you can come up higher. You need to believe that God can do something greater with you. And then there are dreamers who won't work. And that's really foolish because the Bible says... In Ecclesiastes 5.3, a dream comes to pass with much business and painful effort. And I'm going to say that again. Because some of you do have a dream, but if you're not willing to do the work, and even sometimes go through the painful part. You know, I believe when we have a dream, it's like being pregnant. And there may be a few women who give birth that have absolutely no pain, but there's not very many. <laughs> and I think if you want to give birth to something, you have to realize that there's more involved than just getting some bright idea. You have a dream, you have a vision, you have a hope, you have a plan. But then you have to be willing to work and go through whatever you have to go through to see it come to pass. I want to ask you this morning if you have the heart of a finisher.
In John 17, 4, Jesus said, Father, glorify me now, for I have completed the work that you have given me to do. And I don't really know how to explain this to you. It was just one of those supernatural things. But probably 15, 20 years ago, I read that scripture one day, and I sat in my chair where I was praying, and I just began to weep and weep and weep. And I knew right then that it was extremely important to me that I finished what God had given me to do. You know, really, it's not that difficult to start. Everybody's excited. Everybody's enthusiastic. It's new, so there comes a certain amount of emotions and excitement with it. But all that will fade away. You'll come to the time where nobody's clapping, nobody's cheering. You're the only one. And you begin to wonder yourself if it's ever going to come to pass. And that's where you have to make your mind up if you can go all the way through with God. And this, is, this can be as simple as deciding you're going to get out of debt. Deciding that you want to get your health back. A lot of people have poor health. But you know what? You don't have to stay unhealthy. You can do some things to help you restore your health. And it may take a long time, but you can. Well, I'd like pastor to pray for me. Well, that's good. We'll pray all you want us to pray. But <laughs> a dream comes to pass <laughs> with prayer, much business, and painful effort. A lot of people have wishbone, but what we really need is backbone. We don't need to just sit around, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish. We need to have the determination. And, and really, it's exciting. There's nobody any unhappier than somebody who just sits around and hopes that something good is going to happen to them, but won't ever make any effort to see that it happens. You know, I heard something the other day, and I really like this. The more you do, the more you're able to do. And the less you do, the less you're able to do. I want to say that again. The more you do, the more you're able to do. And the less you do, the less you're able to do. Have a dream for your life. Whether you want to get out of debt, get your house cleaned up, see your marriage, really be a great marriage, not just an okay, get by, well, I guess we'll try to stick it out, but I really don't even like you type marriage. <laughs> and don't always think that it's the other person that's going to fix everything. You probably can't do anything about them, but what if you got before God and said, you know what, God, I'm going to do everything that you tell me to do, and then I'm going to let you take care of the rest of it. Yeah. Or maybe you have a dream or a vision to be used by God, or maybe you walked in here today, and the truth is, is you don't have any dream beyond Sunday afternoon. What are you going to do tomorrow? I don't know. Just kind of wait and see what happens, I guess. Well, it won't be anything that you'll be proud of, I can tell you that. you got to have a plan. you got to be able to conceive. A woman cannot get pregnant if she cannot conceive. And the word conceive means to believe. So in the natural, you conceive a husband's seed and you become pregnant. In the spirit, you conceive spiritually the seed of dreams and hopes and faith that God is putting in you. And then you're pregnant. But that's not the end of it, is it? How many will make it through pregnancy? How many will go through labor and delivery? You notice they don't just call it delivery. It's not, here's the delivery suite. It's labor and delivery. Amen? Now, guys, you're just going to have to use your imagination this morning because I like to use this example when I'm teaching about this. What do you see for your future? In Genesis 13, we see a situation where God had blessed Abram and his nephew Lot to such a degree. They had so many cattle and so many employees that their employees were now fighting amongst each other over whose cattle was going to get the grass. You know, people can find just about anything to fight about. And so Abram, being a real wise man of God, he took the initiative and he went to Lot. And he said, I beg you, let there be no strife between us. Now that gets God's attention. Peacemakers get God's attention. We always want everybody to be at peace with us, but are you willing to be a peacemaker? 
He went to Lot, who was his nephew, who would have had nothing had Abram not blessed him. And you know, it would have been very easy to have had the attitude, well, who do you think you are? You wouldn't have anything if it wasn't for me. If there's any problem here, I'm going to get the grass. But no, he went to him and said, I beg you, let there be no strife between us. If you're married and you have an argument with your husband or your wife, are you willing to be the first one that goes and makes peace? <laughs> well, it wasn't my fault. There's nowhere in the Bible that says apologize if it's not your fault. <laughs> or only if it's your fault. Well, you guys got a little too quiet there. <laughs> I said, are you willing to be the first one to go and make peace, even if you don't think it was your fault? If you'll do that, God will honor you. God will honor you if you will do what you need to do to keep peace. I pray you let there be no strife between me and you. You choose, listen to this, he said, you choose the part of the Jordan Valley that you want and I will take what's left. What a humble attitude. So naturally, Lot chose the best part. And what Abram had left, I guess, wasn't all that great. He could have really had a bad day. He could have felt like, well, now i got to start over. You know what? I think starting over sometimes is really exciting. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm working on a book right now that won't, won't come out for a couple years yet, but it's called It's Never Too Late to Begin Again. And I want a bunch of people here this morning to know that it's never too late. You're never too old. You're never too young. You've never had too many problems. You haven't, you haven't had too much of anything. It's never too late to begin again with God. You can have a dream right in here today that your life is going to be better. You can have a dream that you're going to do something great. You can have a dream to be out of debt. You can have a dream to have peace in your home. You can have a dream to see your children restored. But if you're not going to believe for anything, you're not going to get anything. I'd rather believe for a lot and get half of it than a little and get all of it. So in Genesis 13, verse 14, the Lord said to Abram after Lot had left him, Lift up now your eyes and look from the place where you are, north, south, east, and west. For all the land which you see, I will give it to you. So he said, okay, get up there in the top of that mountain. Get out of this pit of depression. Get out of discouragement. Get up somewhere where you can have a greater vision. Look to the north, south, east, and west. And whatever you see, I will give it to you. What do you see today? I think you guys need this. I can tell by the way you're acting. <laughs> and then he goes on and he says a few other things. And then verse 17, and I like this. It says, arise and walk through the land, the length of it and the breadth of it, for I will give it to you. So he told him to do two things. He said, go see something, now walk it out. Go see something, now walk it out. Many years ago, when I was listening to the very first teaching cassette tape I had ever listened to, I had been touched by the Lord in a mighty way just a few weeks before that. I had received a great, mighty infilling of the Holy Spirit. And when God touches your life like that, it's not just for you to have a little zing and a zip or a goose bump. He's equipping you to do something. Equip. How many of you believe you're anointed? Okay, well, guess what? You're anointed for something. If it weren't supposed to do something, then we wouldn't need any anointing. And we're not anointed to give up. We're not anointed to be lazy. We're anointed to see something in the Spirit and to walk it out in our lives. That day when I listened to that teaching tape, it was a teaching taken from Mark chapter 4 called Cross Over to the Other Side. And I'd been in church many years of my life, but I had never, first of all, I'd never heard anybody preach a whole hour. We had 15, 20-minute sermons. And secondly, I couldn't believe that anybody could preach on one verse for one hour and I could actually be interested in it. Why did I like it so much? It was anointed. You know, where the anointing is, you can sit and listen all day long. 
because it's not really a person speaking to you. It's God using that person to speak to you. And it doesn't just drop in your head. It goes down into your heart and you bear witness that this is a word from God. And after I heard that teaching that day, like a roaring, mighty wind, something came into me. Not something that I, that I felt naturally, but I, I, something was birthed in my spirit. And the way that I heard it was this. Someday you're going to go all over the world and teach my word. And you're going to, and you're going to have a large teaching tape ministry, which, you know, God talks to you in the terms of where you're at at that time. Then that was what we had. Well, today, through recordings that go out on tapes, and now you send all that stuff through electronic stuff, but we are teaching the Word of God in 63 languages in two-thirds of the world. So, now, let me say that there's been a great deal of walking it out. There's been a great deal of much business. <laughs> and a great deal of painful effort. But when I think about where I could have been and where I would have been had I not had a dream, I feel very strong about this today. I could even say I feel a little prophetic about this today. God wants you to have a dream for your life. Some of you need to stir yourself up. You've had some problems. You've had some pain. You've had some disappointments. And you've let it kind of just get a hold of you and you're just kind of like, kind of maybe not totally but sort of giving up and I think maybe God sent me here this morning just to shake a little life back into you to say what Paul said to Timothy stir yourself up fan that flame don't let the fire go out remember those prophecies remember the faith of your mother and your grandmother remember the things that God has said to you remember the promises of God don't just look at everybody else and admire what they're doing you do something God is the same God for every person. Have a dream and walk it out. And I love Genesis 15. There's something really worth looking at here in Genesis 15. Verse 1, it says, After these things the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am your shield, your abundant compensation, and your reward shall be exceedingly great. So here's God giving this man, Abram, a great word for his life. And he comes back and says, what can you give me? I have no children. And who is going to be the owner and the heir of my house is this steward, Eliezer of Damascus. What, what, what can you do for me, God? Everything that I've got, I don't even have a child to leave it to. I'm going to have to leave it to this employee. Verse 3, and Abraham continued, look, God, you have given me no child. <laughs> And a servant born in my house is my heir. He didn't just say it once. He said it twice. He was extremely convinced that surely God wasn't talking to him. God's talking to you today. You. You. Okay, don't make this hard. I've only got so much time. You. You, you can, I can feel the mindset that so many people have. You sit out there and you admire Joel or you sit there and maybe this morning you're admiring me. Well, you know what? God can do something equally amazing through you. It may not be the same thing, but it can be equally amazing. you got to be able to conceive. I want a bunch of people today to get pregnant. <laughs> Men get to get pregnant today. Yeah, and all you watching by television, don't turn the TV off because I <laughs> said something that's a little out of the box. You need somebody to get you out of your boring box. <laughs> Amen? Okay, now listen to what God said. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. 
And behold, the word of the Lord came to him saying, verse 4, This man shall not be your heir, but he who shall come from your own body shall be your heir. Now, there was a huge problem because Sarah was past childbearing years. If I could just put it very plain so we can understand this quick, she had already gone through the change of life. And he was not able to do what he needed to do <laughs> to do that. <laughs> oh, well, I kind of got in there and didn't know how to get out. So <laughs> one of them was like 90 and one was like 100. And so here God's saying, oh, you, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to multiply you and you're going to be this and you're going to be that. He's like, I don't even have a kid. And then the second time he says, I don't even have a kid. And God says to him, verse 5, and he brought him outside of his tent into the starlight. And he said, look now toward the heavens and count the stars. And if you are able to number them, so shall your descendants be. And Abraham believed God. Now listen, there's something we don't want to miss. Why did God have to get him outside of his tent because sometimes when you're staring at the problem too long, same old tent, same four walls, same bills, no money, aching back, loud kids, dirty diapers, dirty dishes, refrigerator broke down again, I'm getting old, everything that used to be up here is now down there. <laughs> You look at the person you're married to, you've lost your hair, you got a pot belly, yeah, you know. God says, come out of there. Quit staring at all that. Get out here and get a vision. Get out here and look up at, look at what I've done. Look at what I've created. Amen? Woo! Hallelujah. And some of you need to get out of your tent when you feel yourself sinking. Go for a walk. Go look at a pond of water. Go look at a mountain. If you don't have one of those, look at a hill. <laughs> Do something. Go get with somebody that will encourage you. Go to church. Go hear some good music. But don't just sit there and sink into the lie that nothing good is ever going to happen for you. Nothing good will ever happen to you if you don't just be determined in the spirit that if God can do it for anybody, God can do it for you. <laughs> Old men shall dream dreams and young men shall see visions, Joel 2, 28. And in Acts, on my men servant and on my maid servants. I will pour out my spirit, men and women, greatly and mightily used of God. You know, I have a dream. What's left to dream about? I've done so much. First of all, as long as there's people on the planet that don't know the gospel, I have a dream to try to reach them. And we sit around and discuss all the time. I mean, our I don't say this in any way other than just to make a point this morning. I mean, our ministry is very huge. And I could certainly just sit in my rocking chair and just say, yay, I've done my part. But we were coming back from Indonesia recently, and we were talk I was talking with my son David, who heads up all of our world missions. And, and I said, we were, we were talking about places in the world that we could reach that we hadn't reached yet. And I said, well, where, wh what are some of the driest places? Where... Where can we get into that we're not? And he said, well, you know, he named a couple places. And I said, what about Japan? He said, hey, you can't do, you can't do anything in Japan. He said, they're, they're just really closed. And I said, I want you to go there and find out what we can do. Well, he's bold too. So I said, go, find somebody to distribute books. Get some of our books translated into the language. Find some churches, see, see what you can do. See if there's any way that we could possibly get on TV. You know, we couldn't get on television in Paris, but we put up a program on the Internet, and we got thousands and thousands and thousands of people watching the program every day now on the Internet, and no government can keep them from getting it when it's coming in on satellite. So you wait and see. I'll just declare it ahead of time. 
We're going to do something in Japan. The doors are going to open. The gospel is going to be preached there. I believe that I'll be able to be on television there and multiplied souls will be saved. Now, this year on my birthday, I'm going to be 70. Now, Dodie and I made a pact this morning. She said, you know, I'm 80 this year and you're 70. I said, I'll tell you what, when you're 100 and I'm 90, I'll come here that Sunday and preach. You got to have a dream. People ask me, when are you going to retire? I don't talk to me about retire. How do you retire from a call on your life? This is not a job I went out and applied for, and after so many years, I get a pension and I can retire. I hope when Jesus takes me home, I'm doing this. And you know what? My gift is my mouth. So even if I got to sit somewhere, I can still talk. dream for your life. Well, you know, fulfilling a God-given dream isn't always easy, but it's worth the effort and the sacrifices that may be required of us. Don't give up. You know, Mom just had a vision years ago to um, really just, she just thought about people, you know, hurting and not being able to get, you know, care for that. And so she, we just basically started looking around, how can we start helping people? And so we started with hospitals and, you know, we just go, um, you know, five, six times a year to different countries and um, just try to help as many people as we can, try to go to the poorest, most unreached places that we can find, places that really do not have access to medical care and um, just help people. Door ontzendingswerk Hand of Hope ervaren we hoe levens veranderen en harten open gaan. Uw bijdrage, groot of klein, maakt veel uit in het leven van een mens. Hij krijgt daardoor een warme maaltijd, medische verzorging of hoort voor het eerst over Jezus. Help mee om Gods liefde aan zoveel mogelijk mensen door te geven. De muziekleraar van Beethoven noemde hem een hopeloze componist. Een krant ontsloeg Walt Disney met het argument dat het hem zou ontbreken aan creativiteit. Albert Einstein werd door zijn leraar als geestelijk achtergebleven bestempeld. Well, you know, you have greatness on the inside of you too. And no matter how many challenges you have in life, I'm here to tell you, don't you ever give up. The New York Times bestseller schrijfster Joyce Meyer zal je inspireren om ondanks moeilijke levensomstandigheden sterk te blijven. Bestel nu het boek Geef Nooit Op via onze website joy-meyer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100. Joyce Meijer die is toch van tv? Wat doet ze nog meer? Ze schrijft boeken. Er zijn ook dvd's, themaboekjes, mokken. Hé, hey, dat kan ik allemaal niet onthouden. Daarom is er de Joyce Meijer info- en productbrochure. Die kan je kosteloos bestellen. Online of telefonisch. Super!